What is going on everybody? Welcome to part 10 of our Python for Finance using Quantopian and Zipline tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to continue building on the last one. And the last one I cut it off before we actually uh, spit out the data frame output here of the df.head. Just want to show that it, it actually came through. If yours isn't coming through then you'll want to maybe post a question or figure out why it's not going through. Anyway, up to this point we are successfully fetching the CSV. We can see it here. Great. Now what we want to do is, you know, continue building the logic uh, of our, actually we'll finish the initialize method here and then start building the logic to trade based on these sentiment signals from uh, Sentex. So uh, to carry on, what we need to do next is define our universe of companies basically that we're willing to invest in. So context.stocks equals symbols. And now we need this, the symbols that we're willing to trade. Well, Sentex tracks over 600 different symbols okay so for stocks anyways so we can't do them all because again quantopian has a maximum limit of 255 so or at least at the time of me making this hopefully they'll expand that at some point um, but anyways uh, the max is 255 so what I went ahead and did is within the API you can reference API slash finance slash sentiment dash signals dash or slash top 200 I'll put a link again in the description if I forget Remind me, I'll slap it in there. Uh, so anyways, these are the top 200. And again, like Google's not in here because they've you know, changed to G-O-O-G-L. And there's a couple others that just weren't found for some reason, not quite sure why. But anyway, uh, that's that. So let's take this list and we'll just copy that, move this over, and in symbols, paste. Now we have our context uh, or our stock symbols. So once we've got that, we're, we're done with the initialize and we're ready to actually start building our handle data. So now um, what we'll do is instead of passing, and let's go ahead and make some space. Now what we want to go ahead and do is first in handle data, basically for every bar, we want to reference the cache. So we're going to say cache equals context.portfolio.cache. Oops, not capital used, cache. Okay. Then what we want to do is we want to reference the stuff in our data. So or our data frame basically we want to say like, what is the, what's the current sentiment signal for that company? Right? So what we're going to do is we're going to use a, just a big for loop, but first let's, let's encase everything and try and accept just to be safe to try accept exception as E and then we'll just print string E print or log. It's if you print, it'll still come to the console just fine. So try, and then what we're going to do is we're going to say for s in data. So again, you've got context and you have data. Data is possibilities. Context is like all the stuff that we have right now. So for s in data, what we want to do is we're going to say if, and then we're going to say if sentiment underscore signal in data s. So what's happening here? Basically what's happening is if there exists, obviously this one is a little off center because it starts with preview in, uh, info, but if there is a signal for the company at that point, um, using the CSV fetcher in the way that we did it, it will just, it will add the sentiment signal at the time to that company. So if in data S, which is based, it comes out as like a, a Python dictionary. So if there is a key of sentiment signal in that dictionary of data S for an S is those stocks, what do we want to do? Well, we're going to say this sentiment value is equal to data S. And then we want to grab that uh, sentiment signal. Okay. That's that. Then we also want to know what's the current position. Are we, do we have a position in this company and all that kind of stuff? So we're going to say current underscore position is equal to context dot portfolio dot positions and the positions for what S and then we just do dot amount. And that just tells us how many positions we have in that company. Just for the record, uh, someone can correct me if I'm wrong, but from my findings, positions accounts for both um, investments and shorting. So even if you're shorting, say you're shorting 10 shares of a company, it doesn't come through as negative 10 positions, it's 10 positions. So keep that in mind. 
Um, it'd be kind of nice if it was like negative 10. I don't know. But anyway, because when you short a company, you almost like don't have a position. You've got a position in, in, in money, right? Instead of the company. So anyway, maybe I'm wrong, but I'm almost positive that it gives that like the amount when you're shorting the company, it's like a still a absolute value. Anyway, current position, there's that. Now, what we're going to say is we're going to create some logic for investing. Now, for me, let's just keep it really, really simple. You could take the sentiment value. So there's a there's a, a large array, right? Like a company can be anything from a six to a negative three. So, you know, anything above zero is in theory, maybe good to invest in. Or so maybe you would only want to invest like 1% of your portfolio in a company and then you would like stagger it or something. But for now, we're going to keep it super freaking simple. And we're going to say if... Um, if the, and then we're going to say if sentiment, sentiment is greater than five, i.e. if sentiment is a six, uh, what we want to do, well, if, if that's the case and, uh, and current underscore position is equal to zero. So if the sentiment's really great and we don't have a position in that company, let's get it. So then we're going to say, let's get it. But before we get a company, we need to assess our cash. Because at least for now, we, we're not going to take on any leverage. Now, it, it can amplify things. And in reality, a lot of people are taking in leverage. So feel free to change that if you'd like. But for now, we're not going to take in leverage. So we're going to have here, if cash is greater than the context dot um, investment size. So that's right here. So if cash is more than context dot investment underscore size. So if we have the money to make the investment that we want to make, uh, we're going to say, okay, great. We're going to order underscore value. And the value that we're going to do, or we're going to order the S, the company. And then we're going to say uh, the value is context.investment underscore size. So if you haven't noticed by now, I've been trying to like show you all of the variations of how you can possibly order a company. So in here, Order value is where you can specify the stock and then the amount of money you'd like to invest in that stock. And what it's going to do is it's going to round down to the nearest whole share, right, that you can afford. So kind of a cool little uh, function there. So order value, context.investment size, and then we're going to also have a stop here. So we're going to say style equals stop order. And then this will be context.stop underscore loss underscore percent like that uh, and it needs to be let me see here stop so that times the price so it'll be that times um, the current price of the stock so we will we'll need to add that too so we'll say current current underscore price equals um, data S dot price times and then current underscore price. Okay. So we'll order that value and then we're going to go ahead and do a cash minus equals context dot investment underscore size. And again, from my findings, uh, Quantopian won't automate like for every stock. So like throughout this for loop, the cash stays the same. So I suppose you could throw cash like uh, down here and maybe that'll fix it. I don't think it will. <laughs> if I recall right, it doesn't fix it. Uh, cash will stay the same. So like the value of portfolio.cash is what we're actually referencing here. And that doesn't get updated until handle data is fully complete. Now I haven't seen the Quantopian backend code. Maybe I'm wrong. But from what I've seen looking through the logs, you're not actually losing any money out of this, this what results from this uh, until handle data refreshes. So until that, as long as that's the case, you're going to want to just manually uh, subtract from cash because otherwise you're going you're gonna to have trouble. So what I ended up doing here is I take this, I put it here instead of redefining cash every time. We say at the start of this bar before we start running through the stocks, our cash is this. And then we subtract from that every time we make an order. And that's my way of ensuring that that money is being taken away. Because again, it's really easy on Quantopian to like put way more money in companies than you're trying to. So that's what we'll go ahead and do. So if, uh, if all that is the case uh, there, great. 
And uh, then what we'll do here is, so that's our sentiment for investing. Um, and then what we want to do is we want to be able to get out of the company too. So that's how we get into the company. But what if we need to get out? So we can also have L if, uh, L if sentiment is less than or equal to, and for now, uh, we'll just use mm, negative two, maybe. I don't know. We can use. We'll just do the extremes for now. But you might want to actually get out of a company easier than you're willing to get into a company. So we'll go with negative two for now. Let's go with negative one. So if that's the case, and uh, current position, current underscore position is greater than zero. Uh, so if all that is the case, we have more than, you know, a position in it, basically. What do we want to do? Well, we're going to do order underscore target. I believe we've already covered order target, but S zero and close. So order target, we want to order that many stocks. Our target is to have zero. So we'll be selling all of our shares. Okay. So barring any massive uh, mistake here, starting at, let's see, Quantopian Centex. So our, our data starts on the 20th of October. So 10, 20, and then 2012. And then we run all the way to, I think, the 15th. So we'll do that. Daily data, that's fine. We can run a full back test now. So hopefully we won't get an error. We'll see. We could totally have like a syntax error or something like that up to this point. Because we haven't really run this code, I don't think. Except for the fetcher, I guess. But our logic hasn't been run. So uh, while we're waiting on that, obviously you can, because the syntax, like, the signals that we get from Centex, they vary so greatly that you could you could really make that strategy a lot more complex if you wanted. But for now, we're just going to do it pretty simply this way. Um, and then after we're done here, in the next tutorial, what we'll cover is including shorting of a company. So uh, say the sentiment is less than you know, negative three or some, or it is negative three, let's say, then we're going to be willing to short that company. And then if it goes up to, you know, a certain value, then we're going to be willing uh, to get out of that short. Okay. So we're running now. We can see that we're following the market pretty, pretty substantially. So uh, no surprise that our beta is pretty close to one. Now it's a perfect one. Um, but we are at least up to this point outperforming the market got good total returns. Our sharp ratio is very, very uh, attractive there. Uh, drawdown so far is, is very nice. But again, you know, we're, we're only, we're trading from 2012, right? So this isn't, you know, the longest back test that we could do. It's just, unfortunately, Syntex doesn't have data older than October 20th. I did try to like historically pull data uh, from articles and stuff, but that was just, it was really messy and it wasn't going to be very accurate. Uh, so anyway, here we can see our daily returns and all that. We can see where we're buying and selling companies and stuff. So this is really one of our most actively traded strategies up to this point. We've got a lot of buys and sells pretty common, you know, but there's definitely times where we don't really do much at all uh, or we make very small moves and stuff. Um, anyway, we're almost done here. I wanted to go ahead and run it for sure on camera just because every time we c write code it's really important that we uh, make sure it actually runs so everyone isn't like stuck or something but anyway so we've got a total returns of 83.9 as opposed to the market's 52.6 so we we did quite well actually with this strategy now again we're only testing really three years worth of data so it's important to kind of understand that and, and actually less than three so it's important to understand that we're uh we're not including, so this is basically from, from 2012 to, to now, you can look at the S&P 500, it's been mostly trending upwards, not much downfall. Now, this strategy, because we're not actually shorting anything, would probably do very poorly in a decline. Hopefully, we would choose companies that declined less than others because the sentiment was better for them. And clearly, we're making those choices pretty well because we're, we are performing quite quite well compared to the market basically throughout the entire back test. Uh, so that's nice. <laughs> nice to see that. Uh, anyway, uh, so, so in the next tutorial, what we'll do is we'll incorporate shorting into this strategy. Uh, but anyway, so far, pretty good. Sharp ratio. Not bad. It'd be nice to see it over two, but really as close to two as it is, that's pretty good. Um, not too much volatility. Drawdown is okay. Uh, but beta is pretty high because it's obviously so closely tied. This is mostly a buy and hold kind of strategy anyways. But regardless, beat the market, did good. So that's exciting. 
So in the next tutorial, what we're going to be talking about is adding a short here. And then maybe after that, uh, we'll be talking about, you know, converting this to like a minute strategy or something like that. So anyways, if you have questions or comments up to this point, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions. And until next time.